we don't make the same mistake as we did last week, okay, without recording it. So, what, as I said, we're going to be talking in terms of um, how to get infinite kind of job offers to you, how to create a great profile, and I've kind of broke some notes. And I've got kind of, you know, an agenda, and we're going to be going through that agenda. And I've already spoke in some senses about the old school approach. The old school approach is where you play that wait and see game, where you cross your fingers and kind of go, hey, I hope somebody's going to see my resume when I send it off to that job site or to that company. That very much is you kind of not being in control and, you know, they've, they've got all the control there. They're the ones that are basically, you know, deciding whether you move to that next stage. What I'm trying to say to you is that you need to have a clear reason of what your LinkedIn profile is going to do for you. So for me personally, I believe a LinkedIn profile should be doing two things. It should be helping you to build your brand. It should be helping you to get known in your circle. It should be making you the go-to person for your industry. It should be adding kind of that trust element so people know who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. It also should be when that job opportunity does come up, and because you have been doing those things, and by the way, you don't need to do everything, and I certainly don't, and that might be a topic for another day, but what should be happening is that they think of you. That's key. When those opportunities happen, yeah, you should be coming top of mind. That's why you build your brand. Yeah, think of it like a, a kind of, you know, a BMW car, for example. You know, they will advertise probably throughout the year in different ways and different mediums. And just because you've, I don't know, they put an advert out maybe for January, yeah, they, they don't believe that everybody's going to need a car in January. They're going to keep on using that repetition. So, so the reason why... Um, I feel that I've kind of learned this kind of a process is sometimes consistency above anything else is really key. It's that ability to keep on going, yeah, keep on kind of being visible is, is, is a really key point. So really to, to me, your LinkedIn profile, for me personally, it has two points. It's A, I get hired, and B, I build my like, know, and trust factor. And you've got to recognize as well that you are a business. You are no different than me. And it's so surprising how many people don't recognize it. Yeah, um, you and I, as I said, you, you get paid potentially at the end of the month or you get a salary or maybe you're a freelancer, maybe you're a contractor. But you need to really level up really need to show the value that you bring. And when you don't do this, this is when you're in danger in some senses of, um, of people not understanding what you can bring to the table, uh, where your value is not seen. And sometimes what happens, because I do get these types of inquiries, is where the people go to me, oh my God, my salary is actually decreasing, not increasing. And the reason why that's happening is because people don't really understand the value that you can bring to the table. So it's incredibly powerful when you can build your brand um, because it means that um, you get seen, you get more visible, you get those job opportunities coming to you. And in some senses, you can also dictate how much money that you earn as well. Um, I'll give you a great example. So if you've not... If you don't know my story, my story is I'm a, a global career coach and I've recently, probably in the last six weeks, moved to Spain to get away from um, the cold weather in the UK. And when I'd met my partner, uh, what had happened is he was, he lived in Cambridge at the time and I lived in Liverpool in the UK. So just to give you an idea, you know, um, it's it's considerable distance apart, so okay, if you're not, not from the UK. It's hours journey in a car or in a, even on train. So the point is, is that we both made that decision in some senses to actually, okay, um, his job was construction. So 
it meant that he was always traveling around the UK, so it didn't make, make sense for me to move to where he did. And so we decided to move to a different location. Now, there is a point to the story, and I'm going to explain this. I'd moved to London. I didn't know anybody there. I had managed to scrape a job because my, we focused on my other half to get himself hired, which he did, and he got a great job there. And um, I managed to get, you know, quickly a job, wasn't the ideal job, but I did manage to get a job before I kind of set, you know, through the door. And when I got there, people had heard about me. They knew who I was in the field, okay? So in the field that I work in, which is careers. And that made it so much easier for me to get hired. That made it where I was having kind of not even an interview. I'll be honest with you, I was um, working for a company and or I was, you know, potentially had like a coffee with them and um, that ended up leading to, um, you know, uh, a chat with, you know, the boss after, you know, I spoke to him. I was able to negotiate a four day week. I was able to um, get paid better than I'd ever been paid for as well. <laughs> it was really good. On paper, though, I didn't particularly like the job. But the fact is, and the reason why I'm doing this today, um, but the fact that I'm trying to say to you is that it was my name, my reputation, that was able to do that for me. Even though London and Liverpool are four and a half hours in a car. Okay, so you can see the difference that I'm talking about here. So that's what I'm trying to say to you. It is so ultimately so powerful if you learn that LinkedIn can be utilized in those two ways. Yeah, it's about a job hunting and also b building your presence. Um, I'm going to also be completely honest with you as well. Um, I did make some mistakes um, when I was kind of doing this type of thing, okay, when I was kind of learning the approach. And one of the things that I was very good at is I was good at getting myself known with other career advisors. And that's not really my market. So what I would say to you is work out who your market is. Um, and it's about them understanding, okay, they're the people that need to see me. Yeah, it's not anybody else. Okay, it's those people that can hire you. It's those gatekeepers. And that is the, the, the key people that we need to be kind of focusing on and getting visible with. So hopefully I've explained the purpose of LinkedIn in terms of how we want to be looking at. And as I said, the purpose to me should be to attract those offers even when you get the job. To be, to understand, and this is another thing that most people make the mistake of, you go and get that great job because it will happen eventually, okay? And then you go invisible again. <laughs> you go invisible again. So what I mean by that is that the process of getting hired is being so kind of tough that you kind of want to end that process. You don't, you don't want to even consider doing anything else. But what I'm trying to say to you is that you have still got to be visible even once you get that job. That is critical. Because if you don't, yeah, if you don't, it's like a game of snakes and ladders, you go back to that starting point. And that starting point is, let's create a resume, let's complete job application forms. We're really and truly, what you should be looking to achieve is, it should be that you become so top of mind that if the worst thing did happen to you, like redundancy, that you should be able to, you know, to kind of let your network know that you're available and job opportunities are kind of, you know, coming to you, yeah? Um, because when people know you or they feel that they know you, it kind of really makes it easier for, you know, to, for people to kind of move forward, okay? So I think that's really important to have a purpose to what your LinkedIn profile is, is, is going to do for you. And that is pretty key. And this is what I've found it, it is it can do for you. Okay. So the, the next thing that I wanted to share with you is a client story. Okay. And the client story was in terms of, well, we just started working together. And he was kind of saying to me, but Susan, things work differently here 
you know, it's different, you know, from, you know, I'm from the UK. And I said, I think we're getting too hung up about LinkedIn. And I said to you, the only thing that you've got to ask yourself is, are the people that you need to be kind of interacting with, I suppose is a good word, are they on LinkedIn? That's the only question that you need to ask because LinkedIn is the medium that we then use. That's it. It's the medium that we use to, to actually have those conversations. That is all it is because you and I both know, you know, um, how can I put it, that conversations lead to kind of, you know, that informal chat that you might want to apply for this position. They lead to different things, but it, it's got to start in some senses with a conversation. So when I explain to him, you're getting too hung up about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the medium that we're using. But, you know, from, you know, from age old time, it's conversations that get us to the next point, which again comes back to the purpose. It's again coming back to being proactive. It's again coming back for you taking responsibility. And I know that people say to me, but Susan, I don't like, you know, this selling myself. I don't want to feel pushy, blah, 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 and all the other things that come out. And I do understand this. And this is why when I'm working with a client, I help you to understand, okay, you don't need to be pushy. And we can actually, you know, in a great way, um, in some senses, pitch to a company um, how you can actually help them. Again, it's going against the, 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 the traditional old school approach. You know, um, I'm not disagreeing with the old school approach. I'm still saying to you, if you see a job, you can apply for the job. I'm just saying that this is actually just one way of getting hired. And I'm saying to you, seriously, there are other ways that you can get yourself hired. That is one way. And if you're working with me, I'll be showing you a big list of numerous different ways that, that, that can actually help you to achieve that goal. So it's not about, you know, um, feeling salesy in some senses. It's about understanding that you know that everybody needs something okay normally the company's got a problem and it's how we kind of articulate that in some senses that your usp your unique selling point is the solution to what they're looking for so so recognize that linkedin in some senses is the medium that we use to make things happen and um, and that makes it a little bit easier but yes you do need to be proactive you can't just go okay susan i've created a pretty little profile <laughs> yeah there is a little bit more to it than that and i will literally show you what i mean by that so i'm just going to share the screen with you if i can okay so bear with me i don't know who you think this right one second let me just pause screen share So we want to look here. Okay. So I don't know if you can if you can see this. And I've just lost it. So apologies. So one second again. This is screen share here. I will get back to it. I want to go to my LinkedIn profile. Okay, so we're here. Okay, so this is obviously uh, my LinkedIn profile. And what I'm going to suggest to you is I'm going to give you kind of three tips in terms of how to improve your LinkedIn profile. But I need you to understand it's not just about creating a pretty profile online. Yeah, if it was that simple, I would have figured it out a long time ago. <laughs> Okay, so the three tips that I'm kind of going to share with you that I think are absolutely critical is you've got to have a great photograph. So I'm going to praise somebody here. Jackie 
um, I know and Andre, you have both got great photographs on your uh, LinkedIn profile, but obviously this is a recording. And um, what will happen is that there will be people that listen to this and do not understand that actually their photograph is not actually helping them to get hired. So I'm just gonna go through some kind of pointers in terms of what I mean by a good photograph. A photograph just needs to be you in the picture. You'd be surprised at how many people have the make-do picture where you can see somebody's cut you off. You'd be surprised uh, that there's actually sometimes even two people in the picture. You'd be surprised where, I don't know if men or women are going through some kind of maybe, um, how can I put it, um, midlife crisis. So they then decide to have maybe themselves on surfboard, but they're not a surfer, okay? <laughs> that's not, that's not relevant. I don't get it, I just don't get it, yeah? So if you are a surfer, by all means, you can have a surfboard. But if you're not, why are you doing this? It's kind of like me being in a bikini or something. What's the point? Do not get it. No, we can put you through that either. Okay, so hopefully I've kind of, you know, emphasized that the picture in some senses needs to be well thought out. It needs to be kind of ideally a clear background. It needs to be just as you. It shouldn't have a scarf hat or, you know, a pair of sunglasses on. It needs to be, you know, sometimes I see people with a jazzy wallpaper at the back or potentially even, you know, uh, just, it looks like we've, we've done the selfie picture. The selfie picture is a great one for the moment, okay? They're not really appropriate. They look like, if it looks like a selfie, get it off is, is, is basically my method, okay? And I do tell people, you know, if I'm working with people, I do say, you know, I am pretty, how can I say, blunt, I will say to you if it needs to be changed. Um, so do think about um, the picture that you use. It really is, it, it really is. It's the first thing that people will see about you, so it does say a lot. Okay, so let's kind of take this further. The next thing that you need to be doing is having what I call, see this? This is my URL to my LinkedIn profile. It is this, yeah. And a lot, a lot of the times, the reason why I'm highlighting this to you is that you can actually personalize the URL. So mine is obviously being personalized to what I do. So Susan Bear, could be curious, okay? I wouldn't suggest that you actually, if I'm honest, I wouldn't suggest that you put in, you know, the job specifics. I just keep it to your name, if I'm honest. Um, but normally you will know if this is not being personalized because it normally has loads of digits at the end of your um, URL. And the reason why I'm going on about this so much is that to me, a good, a, you need to be seeing this in a different way. Your LinkedIn profile and your resume or CV, they should be working together, not working apart. So the reason why I'm telling you that you need to personalize that LinkedIn URL is so that you can get it on your resume, your CV, and it needs to tell people what to do, okay? So you've got to tell people, and, and I'm going to give you the exact phrase, it needs to say, connect with me on LinkedIn, okay? So what I'm trying to say to you is that these two things need to be working together. It's absolutely critical, and I think you kind of missed the boat if these are working standalone. So I often see people's resumes on LinkedIn as kind of standalone units, and they do, you do need to change this. I've got to be frank, okay? So you need to get them to link together. However, there is a danger point. Normally what people then do is they will say, connect to me on LinkedIn, but their LinkedIn profile is not. Okay, let me make it clear. 99% of you sound like something from Stepford Wives. Okay, so this is point number three. So what is a Stepford Wife? There isn't a technical term, but I'm gonna try to explain it to you and I am gonna be blunt. You all sound the same. Doesn't matter what country you're from. It really doesn't matter what country you're from. You all say to me, but I'm from a different country, Susan. I'm not from the UK and I'm going, honestly, I don't know what it is. I don't know if you've been all fed at the same template but you all sound the same. So you will all say to me, I've worked in and served industry sector. I have a number of years experience in, I can do X, Y, and Z. 
and then you will give me the, what I call your shopping list, which is my key specialities are, and then you will list them. And I know why you're giving me your key specialities is because you want people to find you in searches. But seriously, when people find you, it doesn't actually give me that wow factor. It makes me go, wow, we need to be speaking to you. So when I say that you sound like a Stepford wife, it means that you all sound exactly the same. The biggest problem with this is two things. When you all sound the same, it makes it incredibly difficult for a hiring manager or even a recruiter to differentiate you from everybody else. The other problem that we've got, you are normally after, the people that I tend to work with are, are normally you know, high level professionals. This is a problem. This is a huge problem. So you are now sounding like a two star hotel. And no, I'm rude. I, I really do know that I'm rude. Um, but I'm being truthful. Yeah, I am being incredibly truthful. You want this you know, six figure salary, but with only providing kind of like this two star impression of who you are and what you do. That's reality of it. Okay, so I would say that you really, really need to up level yourself. You need to be presenting yourself in the best possible way. And I'm going to repeat what I say to every week and every time that I probably do a live stream is that the 99.9% .9 of people, they have never heard of you. You haven't built your professional brand. Therefore, the only way that they know you exist is through your resume, CV, and LinkedIn profile. So when you are given a two-star impression or when you are, you know, um, being exactly like a step of wife and sounding exactly the same as everybody else, that doesn't go really well to me, okay? So you need to really change this up, okay? Um, so hopefully that is, you know, helping you to kind of understand why this is so important to really up-level yourself. Now, I'm going to give you another tip, and this tip is really important as well. And the, the tip that I see is the aim, and I'm going to come back to the purpose of the LinkedIn profile, is to get you hired. The aim is to make it easier for the recruiter, for the hiring manager, for influencers in your industry to make the decision that you are the best person for that role. So guess what's going to help you with this? Getting loads of recommendations not endorsements anybody can do an endorsement it is recommendations from clients or from people you've worked with okay so i tend to for me i am a business so i tend to have a lot of my recommendations in um check out my success files which is here i must add that image Okay, so success stories of my clients. You don't need to be doing that. You could just be literally getting people recommendations on your profile. And it's incredibly simple to do. And I'm actually going to show you. It is so simple. You go ask to be recommended. Look at that. <laughs> That's how complicated it is. You literally press that button. Yeah? And that's really what you need to be doing, okay? So you can be asking for those recommendations for any of those positions. And you do need to be doing this. This is key because it's kind of what we're trying to do is take away any doubt that you are the right client for them. That's what we're doing. We're taking away any doubt you are the right say clients but the right candidate I should be saying for, for that company and that helps to do that because when you've got you know a mixture of different profiles or when you've got a high level professional maybe your boss that's giving you that, that recommendation I believe that goes a long way okay so if that is possible you, you want to go down that road as well okay so we've gone through quite a few tips there in terms of, um, of how to improve your profile um, and the purpose of what you're trying to achieve. And I'm going to ask you kind of, you know, an, another thing that you need to be looking at. So you need to be working out how visible you are in your network. So this is a great KPI to look at. 
And what you need to do is go to who has viewed your profile. So as you know, sorry, you in here. I have uh, <laughs> I have moved locations. So what that basically means is um, I've had a little bit of a break. Okay, so you can see, okay, it's been going up, 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 up. Um, and even though I've had that break, yeah, I have still had a decent number of profile views in the last 90 days. So what I'm trying to say to you is that visibility is key. Repeat after me, you need, in order to get hired, and you will notice I always end this on my emails, maybe I should end it on my live streams as well. It is get noticed, get hired. You cannot really, um, in my opinion, achieve that. You know, uh, you've got to get noticed in order to get hired. It's kind of like no-brainer. People need to see that you exist. So what you need to be understanding is visibility is key. It is not, you know, those silly groups where, you know, you are talking in terms of um, anybody, you know, views your profile, yeah? Um, you know, there's some groups where if you, you if you look at my profile, I'll look at your profile. That's not really going to work. You need to be able to really understand how to work this as a database. And trust me, you're not going to find this, you know, in terms of you need to learn this. Yeah, it's a skill that I think if you want to take this further, we can do. Um, this is a real skill. And this is how you can really then start showcasing the value that you bring. So what I'm trying to say to you is that LinkedIn is not just a pretty profile. It is actually a database. And a database is where there are, there, there, it's where you can actually filter the right people for you. Think about that for a second of what I'm trying to say to you and how powerful that can be. Yeah? And it works. It definitely works. Okay? So the reason why I'm explaining this to you is that those things lead to a two-way funnel, okay? So at the moment, I have got um, recommendations and um, pending invitations. So there's approximately 40 of people that want to connect with me. They know that I'm a business. So I have literally the LinkedIn success academy all over my timeline. Um, and it doesn't happen by accident, okay? I make it happen, and that's what I'm trying to say to you. Um, but you can do this and you can make it happen for you as well. But the thing is, is what I'm trying to say to you is this has got to be a two-way system. So if you are a savvy kind of, um, if you want to look at this in a more savvy way, you've got to get people checking you out. That's what really what I'm trying to say to you. People have got to be checking who you are and what you do. And that's what I've been able to manage to achieve. So take a look at your own KPIs. Do you think that's really fit for purpose? Is it achieving kind of visibility in your own network? And for most people, it's not. Okay, so again, blunt. And if you have got a decent visibility, is it with the right people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, ask yourself that. Is it the right people? Is it doing what it should on the tip? So at the very start of this, I said to you, the way that I see LinkedIn is very much as a networking, a way to build who I am, what I do, and it leads to that age old thing called conversations. So these are the things that it does. Yeah, you know, and conversations lead to opportunities, opportunities where you get work from. And that's why I kept on saying to you, you need to see it's not the it's it's just the medium that we're trying to use. So if you feel in some senses that you're that the people you need to be targeting are on, are on LinkedIn, then you know it's going to be it's doable. It's not doable. It can happen. You can really become the go-to person for your industry. You can really up your game. You can really stop dictating the salary level and showing the value that you bring. Okay, so that's kind of what I kind of wanted to emphasise today. So I really hope that this has been useful. I hope that you can see, you know, how to look at LinkedIn maybe in a different way, a different light, and how you can kind of, you know, if, if you know, if you're listening to this recording, if you're on this recording, then 
seriously, you know, I sent out an email today and the email was really about, do you want to be ready or get ready in 2017? So I will leave that thought with you. But if you're interested, you know, in working with me, then um, I would love to kind of make that happen, okay? My website is a LinkedIn Success Academy. If you've never heard of me before, well, it's lovely to say hello to you and maybe I should have said that at the start. Um, but you want to maybe first of all get a copy of my book, which you can do that and obviously we can take that further. But by all means, drop me an email, connect with me on LinkedIn, okay? Another tip for you is that you can connect with anybody. Yeah, you don't need to use emails. <laughs> you do not need to use emails. So just to kind of prove it to you, let me just show you one final tip. Who's viewed my profile? So let's look at somebody that is not connected with me. Okay, so let me take a dig a little bit. Can I see if I can find a third level connection? I don't think we're going to be able to do that. But anyway, let's look at Charles. Okay, so if I wanted to connect with Charles, then I would literally, I would press connect, not send Charles a message, I would press the connect button. And just a tip for you, you can basically say you've done business before and you can pick whichever one it was. He is never going to know which whatever you picked and you can then press back send invitation. Okay, I'm hoping that I've proved I understand LinkedIn. And if you want to take this further, by all means, please do get in touch um, and speak to you next week from a different location. So just before we do that, though, are there any questions? Are there any questions? I'm going to stop that, that kind of button. Okay, any questions? So I'm just going to uh, stop screen share so for a second okay so what was that okay any questions if you've got any questions whatsoever if you can kind of put that into a chat box that would be fantastic and if there's no questions that is okay as well Or am I on a cruise? I've just been asked, am I on a cruise? No. <laughs> and thank you, Peter. I'm not on a cruise. I am actually, I now live in Spain. My other half has taken a sabbatical and we've just escaped the UK, which I've just been speaking to. Um, I have a lovely virtual assistant and she uh, has just told me she lives in the UK and she said it's minus five. So I'm glad that I've done that. <laughs> and the view. It does look like a, it does look like a ship deck, doesn't it? This is actually our apartment. Okay. So any of the questions, I think we're pretty much done. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will see you on the next session, which is next week, 2.30 UK time. And obviously you will get an email of that as well. Okay. Take care. Thank you, Bonnie, as well. Take care.